Good morning, everybody. Everything new, one of the sun. War has started in Ukraine. This is breaking news. This happened overnight. Um, uh, various uh, governments and media outlets have been uh, warning of this, and it is true. The first thing was that Putin sent in quote unquote peacekeepers into Donbass and the breakaway regions. Um, next, uh, during the night, he started shelling and, uh, and firing missiles at military structures in. Kiev. They are under a full uh, invasion, full-scale war at this point. Putin launches special military operation in Kiev, calls it full-scale invasion. There was uh, some live feeds uh, that were occurring. Image from Ukrainian President's office, this is on Twitter, uh, sent to CNN following loud expo explosions on the ground. In Kiev, uh, Russia is attacking military infrastructure with high-precision weapons. Uh, and Russia says it's targeting Ukraine anti-aircraft systems. They're using high precision weapons. Uh, uh, Ukraine has introduced martial law. No threat to the uh, Ukrainian population, says Russia. And uh, Putin is effectively saying, you know, if, if you, if the military, if they lay down their arms, they can go back to their family and uh, no harm will be done to them. Basically, he's basically calling on the military of Ukraine to stand down, basically. <clears throat> uh, Mod Russia says they are not doing any military artillery, uh, artillery, artillery or rocket strikes in Ukrainian cities. Citizens of Ukraine are not threatened. What is happening is precision strikes to destroy uh, UKR uh, infrastructure and anti-air uh, systems. Uh, and in Moscow, uh, now the markets have been suspended. Uh, so watch CNBC, see if there's a market suspension or massive upheaval. Or, you know, massive downward trend. I haven't even checked the futures on the markets. Uh, they're going to be um, slaughtered today. Dmitry Kuleba says the world must act immediately. Future of Europe and the world is at stake. We're talking about World War III effectively here. This is what they're warning of. Devastating sanctions on Russia now. Fully, uh, fully isolate Russia. Weapons equipment uh, to, uh, for Ukraine. Uh, financial assistance, humanitarian assistance. And the, the big question is, uh, uh, well, well, let's go to this. Tulsi Gabbard of the U.S. says this war and suffering could have been easily avoided if Biden had made NATO had simply acknowledged Russia's legitimate security concerns. Now, honestly, this sounds like uh, the trucker convoy in Canada. If, if the government had uh, simply come out and spoken with the, the convoy organizers, uh, three weeks of them sitting in Ottawa could have been uh, reduced uh, to... A day or two if they if the government simply spoke this is the problem in these last days people are not talking to each other remember the bible says the love of many grow cold they're not talking to each other they're not coming to agreement they're not um, compromising anymore everybody is for himself in this day and age <clears throat> here's another thing putin has launched full-scale invasion of ukraine peaceful ukrainian cities are under strikes this is a war of aggression all right so it goes on uh, that that's your hedge article here's uh ukrainian uh president uh, zelensky uh zelensky declares martial law severs ties uh britain's uh biggest domestic leader uh, uh, lloyd said thursday uh, it was on heightened alert for cyber attacks from russia there was massive cyber attacks government websites were actually down um uh yesterday Related to this, pre preparation for potential cyber attacks was discussed in a meeting between government and banking industry. So that was happening in Ukraine. Uh, we don't know what uh, the outcome of that will be. Uh, that was happening. Ukrainian President uh, Zelensky declared martial law Thursday and announced the country has severed diplomatic ties at, uh, with Russia after the giant neighboring nation launched a military invasion into Ukraine. Uh, the president's actions came in the second video that Zelensky posted on social media as uh, television images around the world showed Russian troops entering his country. Dear Ukrainians, this morning, yeah, uh, President Putin ha announced a special military operation in Donbass. Zelensky was referring to one of the breakaway uh, regions in Ukraine targeted by the, uh, uh, the, the Russians uh, there. Russia has attacked our military infrastructure. Our border guards, explosions were heard in many cities of Ukraine. We introduced martial law. All right, so that, that's happening. Um, uh, guess what? There's a, uh, there's a historical similarity 
in the timing of this as well. This is from Now the End Begins. On March 6th, so it's February 24th right now, on March 6th, similar time frame, uh, 1936, Adolf Hitler took the, the Rhineland to start his conquests. Vladimir Putin is following in those same footsteps by invading Ukraine. So there is uh, some historical uh, precedence here. Uh, it says, we notice that his desire, uh, Putin, uh, to bring Ukraine back to Russia is almost exactly what Hitler said about restoring the Rhineland back to Germany. Both Putin and Hitler call their nations the fatherland. Uh, and also, you've also heard motherland. I've heard motherland a lot. Hitler needed the Rhineland to use as a base from which to launch his invasion of Europe. Putin needs Ukraine for precisely the same thing. But Putin will do something that Hitler could not do attack Israel. And this is where I want to pivot to in a second. Uh, what is Israel doing? What does this look like for Israel as uh, the war of Gog, Magog, Ezekiel 38 and 39 uh, could be coming into focus? Uh, Russia has uh, ships, planes, artillery, and, and foot soldiers on the ground in Syria. Uh, they, are, they were doing drills. They are ready, uh, I think, uh, to go after Israel. And they've already come out and said, I uh, came out strongly against Israeli airstrikes in Syria. And that could be used as a pretext for a strike against Israel. We're going to cover that. This is this is a big deal. This is a trigger point, I believe, for the war of Gog Magog. And many others are suggesting that too. Putin needs Ukraine for precisely the same thing, but Putin will do something Hitler could not do, attack Israel. That's what the Bible says Magog will do. Is Putin Gog and is Russia Magog? This is what we are about to find out. In the meantime, let's uh, send uh, out as many King James Bibles as we can uh, to as many people. <clears throat> and uh, that's the idea of the Great Commission spreading the, the gospel. Uh, so anyways, this goes on. Trump was actually caught uh, saying some things he probably shouldn't have about this. Uh, Trump calls Putin a genius. And I, I thought the same thing, to be honest, when... Uh, Russia, when Putin came out and said, look, we're, we're, uh, we've uh, recognized the Donbass region, the breakaway regions, uh, as, as, uh, as on their own now. We're going to send in, quote, peacekeepers. And so that's what, that's what Trump was uh, suggesting, that uh, Putin was a genius in, in <clears throat> how, uh, how Putin got troops on the ground there, uh, you know, to the front lines effectively for the invasion by declaring that they were sending in peacekeepers. Russia positioned three guided missile cruisers in black and Mediterranean seas in stunning ramp up to all out war. This is where it starts touching Israel in the Mediterranean. Now, this may be uh, to bulk up resources against maybe a, a NATO or Western attempt to strike back or push back. But this affects Israel. Uh, so this is very interesting. This is uh, Debka.com. Uh, um, Russia declares war on Ukraine. Explosions in Kiev, Maripol, Kharkiv, Odessa, uh, Lvov. He declared uh, special military operations in uh, Donbass. Uh, Joe Biden will address the nation at noon Thursday, which seems to me a little late, after condemning Russia as all alone responsible <clears throat> for choosing a premeditated war by an unprovoked and unjustified attack. U.S. and its allies uh, uh, partners will respond in a united and decisive way. I'm interested to see if this is simply sanctions, because I don't think Russia cares about sanctions. Um, <clears throat> not only that, Russia has China uh, working with them, so any uh, uh, sanctions will be blunted by its cooperation with Russia, who, I mean, with, with China, who manufactures pretty much everything in the world anyway. So if Russia needs any uh, products or services, they can get them from China, who is uh, I believe, uh, in cooperation here. In an early morning address, Putin said special military, military operation had launched. he had launched comes in response to threats fr coming from Ukraine. So blame the other guy is what he's doing. He had that Russia doesn't have a goal to occupy the country. Putin said a responsibility for bloodshed lies with the Ukrainian regime. He insisted that the operation was targeting military installations and avoiding populated areas uh, you know of course he knows that if he goes after civilians um the world has <clears throat> basically um the the moral uh requirement uh, to act uh, so he is trying to stay away from that russia's defense uh, ministry also denied attacking ukrainian cities um saying that its military is targeting air defense air forces with high precision weapons unconfirmed reports that russian forces had destroyed or rendered unusable the ukrainian navy 
and taking control of uh, Borispil Airport in Kiev. Other reports spoke of huge seaborne landing in Odessa involving large landing craft and helic- helicopters shortly after dawn. <clears throat> Ukraine's access to the Black Sea was cut off, so they have uh, their, their navy is cut off. Their access really to the west of the world by water is now uh, cut off. This is a big deal. This uh, completely boxes in uh, Ukraine. It says Ukraine on, uh, was on Wednesday placed on war fitting and a state of emergency declared 200,000 military reserve is called up. Border areas restricted citizens given the right to arm themselves. Announcing this is an address to the nation, Ukraine President uh, Zelensky spoke for, uh, from his personal mobile phone. This is taken to indicate that either he has left Kiev or maybe on his way to a safe place offered uh, by the Americans or that he uh, is cut off from access to national TV. And that's probably from the cyber attacks. Russia probably went after the national TV first thing. This is why in these last days, um, it's important to have secondary and, and tertiary means of communication. Don't rely on mainstream media when when something goes down it's going to be cut off i'm actually surprised in ottawa they didn't uh, cut off uh, the cell phones and the live feed uh, to be absolutely honest with you i'm very very surprised they didn't do that that that's a basic kind of war tactic uh, when you're going against the enemy to to do a blackout on media <clears throat> so they can't record things so they don't have information so they can't share information according to latest updates thursday russian forces are also pushing into Ukraine from Belarus and advancing westward. Local reporters add that the town of Lvov is under missile attack. Russian military announced the military infrastructure of the Ukrainian air bases has been put out of action. This is uh, going to be a real test for the U.S. Will they respond? Or will, uh, you know, if they go to sanctions, if they do anything less than responding with military might, they're basically saying, Russia, you can have Ukraine. Uh, that's, that's the end of the story. Because uh, they're not going to go in at, after the fact and try and push Russia out. Uh, that's not going to happen. <clears throat> so this is this is a real test of NATO. Will they do anything against us or will they uh, be fine with Russia completely invading and taking over Ukraine? <clears throat> so what's happening on J-Post? Well, this is the article I saw. Ukraine war reminds Israelis we can only rely on ourselves. And I think this is key because the U.S., I don't think, will come to any military assistance of Ukraine that would uh, spark World War III. No one's interested in that. That means if Russia advances on Israel, the U.S. also will not help. Certainly Biden won't help uh, if he is uh, prime minister when that happens. And, and he's prime min- uh, sorry, president uh, for three more years in the U.S., so there's no, uh, not a lot of chance that uh, Biden would be any help to Israel uh, if Russia were to uh, advance on Israel, and especially what's happening in Syria. So, Russian warplanes flying over Kiev are a reminder Israel must always be prepared to defend itself. And these la- in the last days, um, Israel uh, will only uh, be the one standing for itself. There will be no other nations standing by it. And that's exactly what the Bible says in the last days. All nations will be against Israel. The war in Ukraine is an event the likes of which the West has not seen in decades, literally since the last world war, and yet unknown reverberations uh, likely to be felt around the world. By the way, pay attention to what China is doing. Will China use this opportunity to go after Taiwan <clears throat> and uh, really, um, <laughs> really make the West and NATO look silly? Uh, and I don't think anybody's willing to go against either of those nations in this world. Na- NATO isn't. Um, uh, and who makes up NATO? Mostly uh, uh, Western uh, European countries. Where do they get their uh, uh, energy from? Uh, a lot of it comes from Russia. So they're not, they're not interested in going against Russia. They would lose all access to energy. So we are literally talking about a, a situation of World War III or zero action. And... Russia taking over Ukraine and very likely China acting on Taiwan. As they've already come out and said the last couple of days, they're going to deal with the uh, politicians in Taiwan who are separatists, uh, quote unquote. So watch out. This is all coming down very quickly. 2022 gets worse, as I've always said, and it will be worse than 2021. And it is, and it has been. 
And we are in the ramp up to the seven year period, folks. But there's already one glaring lesson for Israel. We can only rely on ourselves. It, it's true that this is a refrain that comes up again and again in Israeli politics. Most recently, as the world negotiates an agreement with Iran, that probably will not come anywhere close to reasonable protecting Israel. So that means that Israel is going to be backed into a corner. They're going to have to strike, uh, uh, in, in some case, uh, Iran. We will protect ourselves by ourselves, Prime Minister Neftali Bennett says in an interview last month, Israel must do what that it, uh, what it needs to defend itself against extraordinary threats to its existence. <clears throat> now, uh, and the opposition leader Netanyahu said that this week. So, Russia has put down, laid down the gauntlet in Syria, saying, "You know what, Israel, you can't do airstrikes anymore. This is going to back Israel into a corner. Israel is going to have to strike." Uh, significantly in Syria to take out U Iranian uh, weapons and headquarters. And we talk about Isaiah 17, the destruction of Damascus. I think that is on the cusp of occurring at this point. Israel now has no uh, partners. I don't see that um, the uh, world leaders are interested or willing to go to world war. I think this has to happen on the prophetic timeline for a world leader to quickly uh, jump into action. Let me see if I can find my timeline of the return of the Lord here. I think this is exactly what uh, has to happen in the world for a world leader to step up. We're going get, to get to the brink of World War III, and a world leader is going to say, stop, stop, we can bring world peace, we can fix the economy, we can fix all this. All we need to do is come together as a world, stop the fighting, agree uh, to accept this mark of the beast, this world system, this digital ID, and we can solve all the world's troubles. And we're going to create peace in the world for a seven-year period. So the world is coming to the brink of war, and all the world will be, uh, you know, uh, threatened with annihilation. So this this uh, continues to ramp up over the next couple of weeks here, uh, right into I, I believe Isaiah 17 uh, and uh, Ezekiel 38. Uh, a war of Gog Magog, significant war has to happen, and we're already seeing a massive invasion of Ukraine. We're going to see Israel. Uh, act out and and, uh, and cause Damascus to become a ruinous heat again, which which kicks off this era, this period of time just before the seven year period here, right in the middle. Um, social collapse, civil unrest, Antichrist uh, comes into the picture, uh, although we don't know him as the Antichrist yet. He'll be a, good, a great world leader who promises peace and then a peace deal and economic collapse and, and war. You notice here the arrows at the bottom. We have uh, Isaiah 17 happening, Ezekiel 38. I didn't know when this was going to occur. I thought it was going to occur last week, uh, last year rather. Um, but now uh, it looks to be uh, starting to occur. So watch this to go down uh, very, very quickly now. Watch for economic, massive economic collapse uh, to start occurring. Watch the markets this morning. Uh, this is a big deal. We are in the last days. Israel is in a corner. The world is not coming to their rescue. <clears throat> uh, Russia uh, has all the pa uh, cards right now, has all the power. They're doing what they want. China will start doing what they want. The world has no interest in going to World War III. And then this Antichrist leader, whoever this leader is, uh, I think we're going to see him pop up very, very soon. Folks, get your house in order. A time is running out quickly. Find Jesus Christ. Uh, this, coming, this stuff is coming upon us quickly. Thanks for watching. Uh, we'll see you in the next video.